one tiny seedling, one of millions in the Kentucky forest. Small and thin, it seems unimportant, but it is the foundation of an industry that employs thousands of people and serves millions more. This tree is beginning a life that may last for centuries, a life that will go on long after it's harvested. Generations of children will play on the oak floors given by these trees. Families will celebrate around tables made from them. Meanwhile, other trees in Kentucky will become structural lumber, paper, charcoal, chemicals, and even medicine. The people who grow them understand these trees are important, and they treat them with respect. One tiny seedling, one of millions in the Kentucky forest. It wasn't always this way. The loggers slashed into the virgin forests with little or no thought for the future. They left scenes of desolation as they moved on to new forests to be despoiled. There was a time when careless, wasteful logging damaged the Appalachian ecosystem, causing deforestation, erosion, and the loss of wildlife habitat. In the 70 years between 1850 and 1920, American forests lost 300 million acres, an area 12 times the size of Kentucky. In the last century, though, things began to change. Guided by professional foresters, the lumber industry found a better way to sustain and manage this unique natural resource. Lumber professionals recognized that the key to preserving both the environment and their industry was renewability. With careful management and steady effort, they help rebuild the forest. Today, almost half the state is covered by forest, and the number of forested acres has actually increased since 1950. At the same time, the yield of hardwoods, structural lumber, and paper from each acre has steadily risen. It's an American success story, and new chapters are written each day, but it's not a story we can take for granted. I think it is uh, like water, and soil and air, one of our greatest assets. Uh, it, if, if, we, if we treat it properly and manage it responsibly, it is something that we and uh, our, our grandchildren, their grandchildren can benefit from in, in, in everything that it provides indefinitely. Using our forests wisely and preserving them for the next generation requires constant attention and dedication to detail. Let's start at the beginning with that single small seedling. Millions of these tiny trees appear in Kentucky's forests every year. It's a natural process. Some don't survive, but many do, maturing into a climate that's ideal for hardwoods. In less time than you might think, they're ready for harvest. part of the tree is wasted. High efficiency saws like this one use computer imaging to produce the maximum number of high quality hardwood boards. While smaller limbs and even the bark become mulch or sawdust fuel for furnaces, boilers and kilns. These products are an important part of the six billion dollar forest products industry. But it's the hardwood itself that has won the affection of generations of Kentucky craftsmen. Our company uses over 60 million feet of board feet of lumber per year. We get some of the best, best oak that there is anywhere within 100 miles of, of our, our plant here in Somerset. Uh, we've explored uh, other states and at times get low and have had to buy further away and we've always found that the, the quality, the care that the, the producers put in it and the uh, and the actual quality of the wood is, is the best right here. I've been in woodworking probably 20 some years, but I actually started my own shop uh, in 1986 here in town, in Berea. You know, being here in Kentucky, a lot of our customers, you know, they like the idea. Not only, they, they not only like coming in the place where it's actually made, you know, that if the wood comes from that area too, that's even better for them. And uh, so we try to, 
use local woods as much as we can. Over the years, we've done thousands of authentic Kentucky dulcimers. Walnut and cherry being the two most popular woods, but I do use authentic yellow poplar uh, for my simplest and most traditional Kentucky dulcimer. We have such an abundance and variety of woods here in Kentucky, it's just amazing, and a tremendous amount of, of industry associated with that. I, I'm a very, very small user, you know, I, I just appreciate even just one special board. Because preserving the forest is crucial to the future of our Commonwealth, private business people and public servants have to work together. Some industries fight tooth and nail against government regulation. But the fact is, sensible laws have helped make the hardwood industry a success. The best example is the Kentucky Forest Conservation Act, passed in 1998. Basically that uh, calls for a, a number of things out in the logging jobs, just primarily that they practice good water quality acts. The Division of Forestry inspects those jobs. It also requires that, uh, that somebody on the job, one of the loggers, at least one, has been through the Master Logger Training Program, which is a three-day training program. And the Master Logger Program was developed in 1992 as a partnership between the Kentucky Forest Industries Association, the Kentucky Division of Forestry, and the University of Kentucky Department of Forestry. And that partnership has existed and that program has existed ever since. Uh, it was initiated as a voluntary program uh, to provide uh, information to loggers uh, that's useful in their timber harvesting operations. And the goal of that program has not changed since 1992. Now the difference between now and 06 and 1992 is it's not voluntary anymore. Uh, all commercial harvesting jobs uh, there's required to be a master logger on site and in charge and that master logger has to go through our training program and, and graduate as a master logger and then has to go through six hours of training uh, at an interval to to maintain that master logger status and the master logger program uh, teaches safety uh, teaches environmental protection uh, and provides loggers with a greater degree of professionalism and information than they've ever had before the Act also enforces best management practices, a set of rules that protect the land and water while ensuring the continued health of Kentucky's woodlands. There's different requirements. Primarily, the erosion that comes from logging jobs are, come from the roads that are put in, and the BMPs require that roads be put in at certain angles, they be seeded back, they, the water's diverted off of them. There's certain requirements as to how much you can harvest along the stream, you know, so it's basically all designed to protect water quality and, and uh, you know, that you keep the soil there, then you have a good forest that'll grow back. Today's lumber industry has come a long way, and we've learned a lot about how to manage and sustain our forests. We're blessed with a forest that when you cut it, uh, it'll regenerate itself. Uh, that when you manage it correctly, uh, harvest the timber correctly, you're going to protect the water, protect the soil, and provide for a new resource that's going to grow and develop uh, for our kids and for our kids' kids. Each day, Kentucky's forest industry works with private landowners and contractors to sustain forest productivity while protecting water quality, wildlife habitat, and the continued health of this remarkable resource. We know that we are only the temporary stewards of the forest and that tomorrow's growth depends on what we do today.